Hiya folks, it might be very early on Sunday morning but I'm already running a bit late so no intros Who needs intros? You know where I'm going So we're back somewhere very familiar that you would have thought, having spent all day here that I might have researched how to buy a ticket, wouldn't you? Is it these? Let's give this a try from Leipzig to... Oh, I don't even know where we're going. Well, I do know where we're going, but I just couldn't work out if you could buy a ticket all the way there, but it doesn't look like it. We've got to just buy one to Grima. Uh, I've got no idea. Okay, I've got my ticket. It's just a one way, but we'll figure out how to get back later. The funny thing is, I went to the information desk and asked a member of staff there. They came to the ticket machine with me and couldn't work it out either. They said it's very complicated. So my advice is, if you're going by train somewhere in Germany and you still have to buy your ticket, don't leave it to the last minute like me. On the move again already. I wonder if we can stand right behind the driver. Let's have a look. Well, we could see something, but I didn't want to stand there for too long. A bit creepy. Alright, we're at Grima station and from here we've got to transfer to a bus but we don't have long to transfer, we've got about six minutes but the bus station is just behind the railway station Oh, thank God And it's the 619 we need to catch While the old station at Grima looks a bit grim I've heard that the town is really nice and the plan is to try and stop here on the way back. Is that my bus? I think it is. Yeah, the plan is to try and stop here on the way back and have a look around town. But for now, we're just gonna get right down to Colditz Castle. Okay, that's us on our way now from Grima to Colditz Castle. Now, the combined tickets from Leipzig for the bus and the train, it's cost me 11 euros 80 one way. I'm not sure if there's like a day ticket or if I could have done it slightly cheaper. Let me know in the comments if you know. But to go from Leipzig to Colditz and the castle, I think only costs about three euros to get in. So for 25 euros for a day trip, I think that's quite decent. This is us now coming into the town of Colditz. There are about three bus stops in Colditz. I'm not sure which one to get off at. Maybe the guy will tell me. Oh, I think I can actually see the castle off in the distance. Cool. Okay. 
So welcome to Cold It's folks, you get off at the very last bus stop which is called Sportsplatz and what a nice bus stop it is eh? And according to my phone we've got about 15 minutes walk to the castle and I've got a feeling it's all going to be uphill. Like it is a wee bit uphill but it's quite gentle, it's not too bad. Oh now that journey from Leipzig Central Station took one hour and six minutes, that's not too bad is it? And I'm in no hurry really because it's only 20 past nine at the moment and the castle doesn't open till 10 a.m. so we've got plenty of time. I'm standing here trying to make a decision, do I go left or do I go right? But how beautiful is this place? I'm going right. Hello. Oh, you're very timid, aren't you? I tell you what, despite its dodgy history, this is a magical castle. Okay, so look at this, it's a youth hostel. You can stay at Colditz? Really? This is a cutout from a really famous photo from when Colditz was used as a prisoner of war camp. Now from memory I think these were Dutch soldiers and what they were doing was using dummies to confuse the head count but of course in the photograph if you looked closely this dummy had no legs. Some view from up here, eh? Right, let's see if it's open yet. I think we've still got about 10 minutes. Well, if it was 80 years ago, this is a door I would not want to be going through. But these days, it just takes you to the museum. The museum at the castle is quite small, but be aware there are another couple of its rooms elsewhere, so don't miss them too if you've paid for museum only. It takes you through the history of Colditz with some interesting artefacts from the war, as well as a pretty unbeatable view. That wee museum that was just in only costs four euros to access, but I've upgraded to a tour because it's an English speaking tour at half past 10. And I think that'll show me different parts of the castle. But I still think it's really good value. I just wonder if I'll be the only person on the tour. It's very quiet. I love these little cutouts everywhere, they're quite ghostly, aren't they? 
Colditz is very famous, of course, because there were so many stories and movies about the place, and that's because it was used as a prisoner of war camp. But you've got to remember, before the war, Colditz was just a castle. And we all know that castles are very good at keeping people out, but not so good at keeping people in. And that's why there were so many escape attempts, many of them successful. And it was a bit of an Alcatraz because it wasn't just normal prisoners who were sent here. It was often officers who had tried to escape from other camps. So they were quite experienced at getting out of these kind of places. tour over the next hour or so although at this point in time I do apologize to the young ladies as you probably expected a six foot two German with blonde hair and blue eyes sadly you've ended up with me a German speaking Yorkshireman who's actually Polish and so began the guided tour. Unfortunately it would have been impossible to film it all hence this voiceover and collection of short clips but it was fantastic, with Alex, our tour guide, leading us round with an entertaining commentary as we went. I'd love to recommend booking a guided tour like this to you as it was well worth doing, but I'm afraid future tours of the castle will be by iPad rather than by human, and while that's, I guess, just the way of the world, I don't think it'll ever be the same. This, by the way, is the very famous Lieutenant Colonel Airy Neve, the first British soldier to escape from Colditz in 1942. Many escapees would head first for the Czech border, although the nearest truly neutral country was Switzerland, at around 300 miles or 500 kilometres away. And there are stories of escapees walking this route in, as you can imagine, difficult conditions with few supplies. Way up high in the loft of the castle, we saw a recreation of the glider which would have been the most daring of Colditz escapes, although it never ended up happening. The prisoners did however plan and build a glider exactly the same as this, with the intention of flying it off the roof to freedom. What an escape that would have been. And it could have worked, Channel 4 came here in 2012 and recreated a successful takeoff of a glider built to the same spec, which they landed in a field on the other side of the nearby river. Our final stop was in the chapel, a building dating to 1623. Now here there was a successful escape by French prisoners, although it took them nine and a half months to tunnel their way out, often aided by the sound of the organ and the choir in the chapel above. But it just gives me the heebie-jeebies to think of crawling through tunnels with no way to turn around if things went wrong. But that just shows the determination of these men to break free from Colditz. I'd heard stories of escapes before, but I never really appreciated how difficult they actually were. And down here in the cellar you can see just how narrow those tunnels were, and you get a look at the implements used to carve away at the rock. Nothing went to waste and nothing was thrown away. Well that tour was absolutely fantastic, but I'm afraid to say it's one of the last because at the end of this month, Colditz Castle will close for five months and it's all going to be digitalised. So that'll be the end of the guided tours and I think that's such a shame because Alex was superb. Well now it's time for me to escape Colditz Castle, but having done the tour, I now understand that it wasn't quite this easy back in the day. I just can't believe the creativity of those prisoners to get out of this place. Absolutely incredible. I'm gonna head into town now to see if I can get a better view of the castle as a whole from a wee bit further away. I really should have asked them if there's somewhere I should go. Well, it's a beautiful town, isn't it? But on a Sunday, it's a sleepy wee place.
I'm trying to get a better view of the castle, but I've wandered into some kind of industrial estate. I mean, the view is cool from here, but there must be better. Nope, I'm struggling to find that prime view, or maybe here? Ah, this looks promising. Oh no, trees, of course. Well, it's a wee bit far away, but I think this is as good a view as I can find of the castle from down in town. But by pure chance, I'm standing in a field, which is quite a cool place to be, because when Channel 4 came over here in 2012 and recreated the glider and how it would have flown away from the castle roof, this is exactly where it landed. And they actually had to crash it a wee bit early or else it would have gone into that yellow bungalow over there. Now the castle itself, it might look resplendent in white these days, but during the war, it would have been a cold, dark grey colour. And who remembers the TV series Colditz from the early 70s? Well, that wasn't filmed here at Colditz because back then, this would all have been in the old East Germany. There's no way they could have filmed it here. But do you know where it was filmed? And my clue for you is there's a Scottish connection. Can you work it out? I feel quite lucky because I think I've found one of the only places in town that's open because of course on a Sunday, Germany just kind of closes and that's kind of why I came on a day trip today. But in here I'm going to get some pizza. I'm so hungry. Well, the pizza's a bit bigger than I was expecting, but you know, I'll give it a good shot. It's definitely knife and fork pizza. It's very messy, but it's amazing. Yes, that's what we're talking about. Trabant. It's just a perfect wee car, isn't it? Yeah, I love these spinny timetables. I'm easily pleased, eh? Oh, there's mine. 613 228. Like I said earlier, I was hoping to stop off in Grimma on the way back and have a look around town, but the timetable says no. We're going a different route back to Leipzig, so that one will have to wait for another day. Who knows if I'll ever see Grimma. This is my bus, I think. Hello. Uh, ein Ticket nach Bad Lausick. 4,20 Euro. Danke. Danke schon. Nächste Haltestelle. Kolditz, Lausicker Straße.
Danke schön, tschüss. Well, that was basically a taxi. I was the only person on that bus. Now we have got seven minutes to catch this train. And of course, again, I've still got to buy my ticket, haven't I? Right, let's hope I can do it this time. And always remember to do something with your ticket that I didn't remember to do in the way here. It's a nice old train, isn't it? It is quite busy in all these old compartments though. I think I'll just stand. It's only 20 minutes. Welcome back to Leipzig Station. I hope you enjoyed that wee day trip and agree that it's a great way to spend a quiet Sunday, whether you're going from Leipzig or from Dresden, because cold it's just kind of sits right in between the two cities. Thanks again so much for watching, folks, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.